Nickelodeon Universe at Minnesota's Mall of America was the first of two Nickelodeon-themed parks to open in North America. The other, operating at the American Dream Mall in New Jersey, is another park I had the chance to visit this year. Now, I already have a countdown video made for that park if you're interested in hearing about more, so a link will be put in the description. The park in New Jersey has five roller coasters, and while their collection of screen machines is drastically better than what Minnesota's location has on offer, the park is an entirely different story. There is no sugarcoating that the New Jersey park feels like a giant Costco box with some crazy ride just plopped in it. Mall of America's Nickelodeon Universe is a different story as it feels lively, elegant, colorful, and you don't need to pay $80 for admission. As I said though, it seems as if the consequence for this super compact and creative indoor park is a lack of room for large roller coasters. So, what they did instead is build considerably smaller standout attractions that still pack a punch nonetheless. Rides aside, I walked away a pretty big fan of this place and will happily admit that if smaller, less quality attractions is the price you have to pay for a far more enjoyable park, then so be it. And even if the coaster lineup is not as impressive as New Jersey, because the park is technically eligible for its own countdown video, we'll still be ranking the five compact coasters that it has to offer. So without further ado, let's dive right into the list. These are the top five roller coasters at Minnesota's Nickelodeon Universe. Number five, Back at the Barnyard Hayride. The park's smallest roller coaster by far is themed loosely to the children's comedy show Back at the Barnyard. And while the ride is literally as basic as it gets for a kiddie coaster, I still appreciate it for A, serving its purpose in the park's lineup, and more importantly, B, for serving as an additional coaster credit. Plenty of theme parks nowadays aren't letting older guests on their kids' coasters, even when it's proven to be totally safe. So getting to ride this one with no issues whatsoever is something I should commend the park on. It is a bit silly for people my age to be riding it at all, but for those of you credit seekers, you should have no problem trying to get the park's one and only kiddie credit. Number 4, Pepsi Orange Streak. Opening in 1992, the park's Zero Tivoli coaster is actually a pretty fun ride for all ages. The way it snakes all around the park and gives kind of a scenic tour of the whole thing is easily my favorite thing about it. In that sense, the closest coaster I'd compare it to is Jaguar at Knott's Berry Farm, but I think this ride makes much more sense in this particular park. It is the perfect roller coaster for younger guests making their way up to the more intense attractions, and even thrill seekers like myself can enjoy the decent ride experience in the back rows. It's no surprise that I'm not describing Orange Streak to blow you out of the water, but depending on what you're looking for in a coaster, it might just satisfy your appetite. Number 3, Fairly Odd Coaster. Themed to the immensely popular TV show Fairly Odd Parents, this Gerslauer spinning coaster mirrors the exact same layout as the pandemonium coasters you can find at the Six Flags parks. But don't knock Nickelodeon Universe for cloning their rides, as this one opened before all of those in 2004. And uniqueness aside, I think it's worth noting that this coaster is genuinely a fun family coaster. Because of its spinning technology, the ride experience is significantly modified and has made a whole lot more interesting. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast like myself, Fairly Odd Coaster probably will not impress you. I won't lie. But if you've never been on one of these Gerslauer spinners, you are in for a smooth and exhilarating family thrill coaster experience. Number 2, Avatar Airbender. From one spinning coaster to another, the park's Intamin U shuttle coaster is a bit of a different take. Its design consists of two rotating seat arrangements, one on either side of a car that resembles a surfboard, hence the model name Surf Rider. Another name for the ride's model is the Halfpipe, which rather than the cars resembles the actual track layout. It's as simple as it sounds, with a U-shape utilizing two beyond vertical spikes or towers. But what about the ride experience? That's the most important thing after all. With it being number two in the park's lineup, my answer should be obvious enough, but yes, it is a lot of fun. The disorienting ride spins you at heights of up to 70 feet and through a multi-pass LSM launch system. As with the aforementioned Fairly Odd Coaster, this is a cloned ride though, so if you've been on one before, it might not be quite as interesting as if it was your first time. But because you still technically get a different ride each time with the spinning seats, I'm still able to get a serious kick out of it. I think Avatar Airbender is a super fun ride all around, but maybe a little bit weak for a top 2 placement in the park. Number 1, SpongeBob SquarePants Rock Bottom Plunge. Going into the park, it was obvious which of the five coasters would be the best, and that is their Gerslauer Eurofighter theme to SpongeBob. While you can find many other Eurofighter coasters all over the world, this particular installation, known as the Eurofighter 410 model, is the only ride of its kind with this exact layout. What this layout has on offer versus some of the other small Eurofighters like Hydras at Casino Pier or Adrenaline Peak at Oaks Park is a small speed hill and funky zero G roll. These two elements, aside from the drop, are the best parts of the entire ride, so I'd actually consider this coaster to be better than Hydras and Adrenaline Peak. But what about the roughness and the over-the-shoulder restraints, you may ask? Well, contrary to popular opinion, I didn't find this ride to be rough at all, and the restraints, while not as comfortable and exposed as the manufacturer's lap bar designs, still doesn't bother me like it bothers other people. SpongeBob Rock Bottom Plunge definitely doesn't compare to the New Jersey Park signature coasters whatsoever, but it is a solid little ride in its own right with some super punchy maneuvers overall. 
In conclusion, sure, this park may only have five coasters, and sure, it isn't the strongest set of five coasters out there, but I urge you to head out to this park for more than just the screen machines on your mind. It is genuinely a really cool place, and it's conveniently right by the airport of Minneapolis and is affordably priced. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed today's video, as even though it was a bit of a shorter one, it hopefully gave you an insight on the park's ride lineup. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.